Welcome to the Windows Crate for Rust, letting you call any Windows API past, present, and future. Rust is a systems programming language. The Rust programming language is comparable to that of C++, both in terms of its syntax and the fact that it provides performance on par with modern C++. However, unlike C++, Rust is built on the promise of guaranteed memory safety without the need for garbage collection. Why Rust? Well, it could have something to do with the fact that it is the most beloved programming language by far, year after year. It may have a relatively steep learning curve, but once you're over the hump, it's hard not to fall in love. Much like C++ WinRT before it, Rust for Windows is an open source project developed on GitHub. We accept contributions, so feel free to get involved. As a Rust developer, you're probably already using Cargo along with Crates.io to manage your dependencies. The good news is that the Windows Crate gives you immediate access to the Windows API. You can also find Rust documentation for the Windows Crate over on docs.rs. Not convinced? Let's write some code! At the command prompt, let's use Cargo to create a new project, and let's make that the current directory. We'll also use Cargo to create a nested crate called bindings, so that the build can cache the results of any bindings we import. Now let's open the sample in VS Code. First up, let's open the project's cargo toml file and let's add a dependency to the local bindings crate. And of course, the Windows crate itself. Now inside the cargo toml file for the bindings crate, we can add a dependency to the Windows crate, both for the bindings library and its build script. Just make sure to use the latest version. Now we can add the build script itself. This is what is going to generate the bindings that we will ultimately rely on. Notice how the build script lives directly inside the bindings directory, outside of the source directory. Inside the build script, add a main function. Then within the main function, we'll call the Windows build macro to generate bindings. The build macro takes care of resolving any dependencies, directly or indirectly, chasing down any types you may need, by parsing and inspecting the types in metadata that take the form of WinMD files, describing all of the Windows APIs. It then generates Rust types or bindings directly from that metadata. Let's start with the Windows Web Syndication API. The Syndication API lets us download and parse an RSS feed, so we'll use that to download the recent entries from my blog. You can list here any use paths you will need in your project. You can even use the asterisk wildcard to generate bindings for an entire set of APIs. Obviously, build time will be improved if you only generate the bindings you actually need. So you could limit it to just the syndication client class. Even then, the build macro will include a few other supporting types that it determines are necessary to use the syndication client class. It does, however, try to limit recursive dependencies that would overly slow down build times, so you may need to add additional dependencies depending on what class or interface methods you wish to call. For this example, let's keep things simple and just include the web syndication, foundation, and collections namespaces or modules. Now inside the bindings library source itself, remove the default code, and we'll just use the Windows include bindings macro to include the source code generated by the build script. That's it for the bindings script. Anytime you need access to additional APIs, simply add them to the build script. Now we can start writing code for our project. Let's open the main source file. And before we write any code, let's make sure we can build and run by hitting the run shortcut provided by the Rust Analyzer extension. If this is the first time you're building the project, it may take some time for, the, for Rust to compile the bindings. Fortunately, it's smart enough to cache the results and reuse them for subsequent builds. Wonderful. Down in the terminal window, you can see that it successfully downloaded and compiled the dependencies before building the sample project itself. Now we'll employ use declaration to shorten the paths to types we need. Here you can list any types from the generated bindings. The syndication API uses the URI class to identify the location of the RSS feed and then the syndication class itself. Now we can add a main function to do the work of downloading the RSS feed. You'll notice we're using the Windows result type as the return type of the function. This will make things easier as it's common to deal with errors from operating system functions. First up, inside the main function, we'll create the Windows Foundation URI object. Here you can see the question mark operator being used to handle and short circuit any error resulting from this method call. 
If you come from C-sharp or a C++ background, think of this as the moral equivalent of exception handling. This just avoids us having to do a bunch of manual error handling. Windows runtime classes like this were designed for languages with constructors like the C-sharp and C++ languages, but since Rust lacks constructors, we're left with calling the equivalent static methods create URI in this case. Next, we'll create the syndication client object. Here again, the syndication client class was modeled with the default constructor, and this is translated into a static new method commonly used in Rust. And then we can use this object to retrieve or download the RSS feed. The retrieve feed async method takes the URI object and begins an async operation. That's the result of the retrieve feed async method itself. We can then either use a Rust async function to cooperatively wait for the results, or just use the blocking get method to do the same in a synchronous fashion as we're doing now. Finally, we can enumerate the items representing the recent entries from my blog. The feed items contain a lot of information, but here we'll just pull out the titles as text and print them out. And that's it. The Rust Analyzer extension is having a bad day, but hopefully this should work. You can either hit the run or debug buttons provided by the Rust Analyzer extension directly inside of VS Code, or you can return to the console and use Cargo to build and run the app. But that's not all. I did mention that the Windows Crate lets you call any Windows API. That includes not only WinRT APIs like the Web Syndication API, but everything from traditional windowing and GDI functions, all the way to modern Direct3D12 APIs, low-level networking and IO APIs, and much more. For the sake of this demo, how about we just call the good old message box function? Let's add this function to the generated bindings. And now in the main source code, we'll quickly add this namespace or module to the use declarations. And then we can simply call a function right here. Note that these older Win32 APIs are marked as unsafe, and let's just say hello. And sure enough, there it is, hello world. The Windows Crate makes it as easy and natural as possible to call and even implement Windows APIs using the Rust language. A lot of work goes into making this all come together, from parsing metadata, generating idiomatic Rust bindings, and much more. You can also find a variety of examples in the repo to help you get started. Do give it a try and let us know what you think.